Hello and welcome to this video provided by Fudge Learn on Oracle eBusiness Suite. I'm going to take a look at the receivables changes in release 12.2 and there's plenty to talk about, believe me. And Oracle have introduced some new capabilities to support receivables teams in reducing their period close timescales. The first of these is a new report, Sweep Invalid Distributions. This report shows the details of the accounting exceptions that may hold up the period close and therefore require investigation and action. The report can be used to assess what action needs to be taken to resolve the exception with the option of sweeping to the next period and posting a manual journal to the current period. From version 12.2.8, the Receivables Enterprise Command Centre dashboards become available, providing information such as the receivables outstanding balance, payment history, transactions ageing and much more. In version 12.2.9, the Receivables Period Close dashboard becomes available. This dashboard provides information that is relevant to the Receivables Period Close process and also gives the ability to export dashboard table data as a .csv file, which means that the information can then be populated and manipulated in Excel. The period close dashboard and its drill down capability have the potential to increase efficiency and significantly reduce the admin burden for receivables teams. So they're well worth considering in version 12.2.2, lockbox processing of receipt data has been automated via the availability of a concurrent request, which can be used instead of initiating receipt matching from within the user interface. This concurrent request should help to speed up the receipting process. In version 12.2.5, there are two new methods made available for applying cash receipts. These are Levenstein and Knapsack. Using the Levenstein distance algorithm for matching scores automatically applies the receipt based on a score threshold. This means that receipts can be prioritised and applied more effectively. The second method applies receipts by knapsacking the receipt amount against open customer transactions. To put this in another way, it means that the process is looking at a combination of receipts and establishing the best match against available transactions. Both of these methods can help to improve success rates in automated receipt matching, so they're well worth investigating. So now let's take a look at a short demo of the Receivables Enterprise Command Centre. So here we've got the Outstanding Receivables Dashboard and we're filtering on the Ledger Vision Operations. We've got the key receivables information shown across the top and we can see from the charts the transactions ageing and top past few customers information. We can see that for vision construction, um, we've got 1.9 million over 90 days outstanding. So let's take a look and drill down further. If we examine Hillman and Associates and take a look at what's happening with that customer. So towards the bottom of the dashboard, we've now got a transaction list, which has been refreshed to show the data specific to Hillman and Associates. You can click on the drop down to select various different types of information and we can click on the preview icon, which shows us a copy of the invoice that went out to our customer Hillman and Associates if we wanted to do a bit more analysis around the specific line items on that invoice and what was actually um, ordered by the customer. If we go back to that transaction list and look at that specific transaction by clicking on the 
transaction number. This will integrate directly in the receivables workbench. OK, so we can see all the specific transaction information. Say, for example, we can look at any credits, perform corrections to line items, quantity values. And the integration means that there's no need to manually switch responsibility. In the dashboard, we can also refine our data further by using the information on the left. So we can filter by transaction information, transaction number, transaction date, or even amount. Let's have a look at the next dashboard, which is the billing process dashboard. So we've got two ledgers we're looking at here. And we're going to focus on the vision operations ledger again. So in our charts, we can see incomplete transactions. And in the other chart, we've got any pending adjustments. So we've got some pending adjustments for the customer business world. We can see that we've got 240 import errors. And towards the bottom of the screen, you've got the specific details of the incomplete transactions line by line. We can see any import processing errors and we can see specifically what they were. If we wanted to filter on a specific error type, then we can just click on that message. So let's have a look at that transaction, 12004. This will take us into receivables, into the receivables manager responsibility. And we can see that manual transaction to customer CIC Management Incorporated. So we didn't have to switch responsibility. It automatically knew which responsibility was required to view that transaction information. We can, if we want, export that transactions list into a .csv file if you wanted to do some manipulation of the information in Excel. So let's go now and have a look at the payment process dashboard. This is going to show us information related to the receipts. So the dashboard is showing us that there are only two unapplied receipts for a value of over 5 million. And it's directing us to look at Hillman and Associates. So if we filter on them, then it becomes clear that 5 million is actually only one receipt. So we can do some further analysis now and look at that actual receipt in receivables and do some further analysis on that to see why it hasn't been applied. So here's the receipt, and we can see exactly the same information as we would if we went directly into that responsibility. OK, so let's come out of here and we'll return back to the dashboard. As well as unapplied receipts, we can also look at remittances that require attention, as well as lockbox errors. OK, so let's move on and let's have a look at the payment history dashboard now. 
again for the same ledger, Vision Operations. And at the top of the dashboard, you can see the key data in relation to payment history. So we've got weighted average days paid, weighted average days delinquent. We've got the number of paid receivables transactions. And if there were any applied receipts, then they would be shown there as well. The weighted average days paid and the weighted average days delinquent data is also represented here visually in these two charts. In the lower portion of the dashboard, we've got information specifically about paid transactions and then on another tab, we've got payments information. You can use the headings across the top to reorder the data that's in that table. And of course, on the left hand side of the dashboard, you can also filter using specific criteria. I think all this kind of information in this dashboard is useful for collection teams. Say if they're trying to do some analysis around payment trends for a specific customer um, and, and understanding the delinquency and um, behavior of a specific customer. Let's now take a look at the period close dashboard. So in the period close dashboard, we've got information here that's going to help receivables teams to proactively manage issues that could potentially hold up period close. So we've got unaccounted events, we've got draft accounting, accounting errors and untransferred journals. Let's have a look at some accounting errors. In the chart, we can see that we've got invalid receipts that have been created. And at the bottom of the dashboard, we can see specifically what those receipts are and we can see some more detail about them. This unapplied receipt here on the second line, it's showing as unapplied cash. So we could use the dashboard to help us understand why that receipt is showing as unapplied cash. We're going to be producing a video that goes into more detail about this dashboard and the other enterprise command centers and dashboards that are available. If you'd like more information or have any specific questions about release 12.2 changes, then please do go to our website. You can use this QR code, which will take you straight there. We'll also be providing further information on Oracle products impacted by release 12.2. So don't forget to click on subscribe and then on the bell in YouTube to receive updates when we make further videos available. You can also add comments and we'd love to hear your thoughts. Finally, here are some sources of further information.